Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Network Hour podcast. I am your host, Molly Kreese, and I am so happy and excited to have this guest with me. I've been knowing her for a while. Um, she's attended some sessions, getting to know her, not on LinkedIn as well, and really seeing the great work that she's doing. And I'm so I'm excited to have her here with me as a guest, the amazing and powerful, extraordinary Tammy Wiley. Thank you so much, Tammy, how are you doing? Thank you, Molly. Great um, being here and thank you for having me. I am doing well and I'm excited um, to speak with you. It's always a pleasure, you know, um, exchanging thoughts and having great discussions with you. Great. So today we're going to, we have a series that we're continuing doing. I find it is such an important topic. And so I'm continuing it with this today on our episode. And so we are continuing it, the discussion of professional happiness. But before we get into that, I want you to tell our listeners more about who Tammy is and what Tammy does. Okay, that's uh, beautiful. Thanks. So um, for the last 10 years, I've worked in workforce development. Prior to that, I've always supported the um, workforce development uh, sector as a recruiter. And then having um, been successful in that role, uh, aligning talent with my clients, I felt it necessary to kind of get really, really down into assisting job seekers by teaching professional skills and then um, gradually branching off to, into starting my um my boutique or offering boutique resume writing services where I endeavor to um, highlight the unique skills and talents of my clients and, 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 and just make them stand out on, on resumes. Um, additionally, I work with, for the Grace Institute as a professional development instructor and administrative skills instructor. And um, I really feel fulfilled in both roles because I get to see others flourish. And in seeing others flourish, I myself, I'm, I sharpen my skills <laughs> up in tandem with that. So it's it's always a win-win and it's always a pleasure uh, to work with others and, and, and see them grow tremendously. That's awesome. So you're definitely strategically positioned to talk about this topic today. Yes. Um, <laughs> I hear an accent. So where are you originally from? I am originally from Trinidad. And oh, Trinidad in the house. I, well, well, I have family. I have family that live over there in Trinidad. So that's beautiful. Yeah, and I've I've gone to Trinidad when I was much younger. Um, I really liked it over there. But something that I really that really stuck with me is that um the pepper, the love pepper over there. Oh yes pepper and everything yes and so now I find myself when I'm eating something or doing something I have to have that pepper sauce to make yes. it extra spicy and nice yes <laughs> so, yeah. yeah we're we're known for our spicy foods we're known yeah, for our spicy yeah, foods yeah, yeah. and beautiful beaches exactly <laughs> of, of course it's the Caribbean yes. uh, you yes. guys are our our neighbors because I'm from St. Vincent and the Grenadines oh beautiful so it's, it's neighbors neighbors that's awesome beautiful so let's let's get into let's get into this topic and, and the thing about this topic is that I've spoken with so many different guests and there's so many different perspectives. That's what I love about it. Right. And it is such a controversial topic as well, because I've had people who have reached out to, to come on the podcast and talk with me about it. And I've had people tell me playing out, Molly, I can't talk about that topic because I am not professionally happy at the moment and right. I knowing that it's going to go on different platforms I don't want my job hearing about this and right. getting fired before I'm ready to leave right so um I I understand it's a it's a controversial topic but I want you to be um you're an entrepreneur doing your yes. thing too but I want you to be as honest as you can and, and offer tips and, 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 and motivate our listeners as much as possible. Yes. Um, so for me, I can tell you that it is truly a journey, professional happiness. And it's renewing of yourself 
renewing of your skills and renewing of that assurance daily. Mm -hmm. It's like waking up every day. Not you, you have your baseline, but not every day you'll wake up enthusiastic with roses and bubbles, right? So, but it's not until we pause ourselves and then reconnect with our purpose that that bad morning would turn into a beautiful afternoon. So for me, I think professional happiness is first finding your your, your place and, and finding your essence as a professional, but also it is daily renewal of your mindset and daily renewal of your thoughts, right? Because we could center ourselves and say, yes, this is who I am professionally. This is what I do. And although we may, might like what we do, not every day we would like what we have to do. <laughs> There's a difference. And it's being able to renew that mindset and, and kind of switch it on, that happiness. And, that, and that's where it comes from, right? So, and in saying that, I really think it's developing and finding your true professional identity. Because in understanding your professional identity, Say that again. Say that again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I think it starts off with identifying who we are professionally or establishing our professional identity. Because it is in establishing our professional identity that we have internal consistency. When we have internal consistency, we are then able to act outwardly or have it reflect on the outside and now there's a solid foundation and we're now able to kind of switch when we have difficult times in our profession that hey this is who I am and this is what I'm capable of doing and that is it breeds confidence it breeds assurance and it's the confidence and the assurance that will get us through the most difficult times Okay, wait, wait, well, hold up. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just, oh my gosh. You just you just went deep for a second. Ago. You just dropped so much nuggets there. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. So you said uh internal consistency. I've never heard somebody say that. Um um, since I've been doing this topic, professional happiness. So, so, so tell us what you mean, go deeper with that. What do you mean by internal consistency? So internal consistency is answering and addressing the, who am I question the, I am for me personally, I'm a motivator of women because that's a demographic I work with. I share professional skills. That's who I am. So it's finding your who, your I, addressing that question, writing on a piece of paper. I am blank. I am blank. And you could be several things. And it's, it's establishing that and believing in that internally. That when you are in, when you encounter the outside stimuli or the outside challenges, because you've breathed that breath of who I am, you know who you are and you're able to, to walk through it through your difficulty because then you've addressed that that cognitive dissonance you're not you're planted like a tree as opposed to going with the wind because you mm -hmm. know exactly who you are and what you can bring to the table and what you bring to employers but there are a lot of people who don't know who they are and that's a problem <laughs> and that is and it, it is so important and it is so important and i can tell you where it starts from for me it was not always easy okay yeah I was great at, at recruitment and I, 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 I kind of, I knew and I know I enjoyed launching others into careers, but I was not happy because of the, the sales portion mm -hmm. of it. I was great at prepping and helping others find their professional passion. Not so happy with the sales portion of it, right? I hate, I, I enjoy talking, but I hated making those phone calls. And it's identifying that one nugget of what I enjoy doing and trying to uh, expand on it. And that is how I kind of moved eventually into coaching and training and teaching. And that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. It is finding 
that fervency or that passion in what you're doing and then expanding on that. Mm -hmm. And that's where it, it, the finding your who I am would, 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 is, 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 is developed. How do you go about finding who you are? Because um, I imagine when I was in my, my early 20s and stuff, I was trying to figure out all these things. Who, who am I in this situation, that situation? But I imagine you have to come to some sort of realization and, and there's a process and you have to do some reflecting on all that kind of stuff. So, so in, your, in your own words, how do you come to that um, acknowledgement of saying, this is who I am? I'm going to say it takes a lot of deep work and it, takes, it would take a lot of stumbles and it would take a lot of kind of pulling yourself in that quiet time and really listening to yourself and assessing everything. Um, I remember sometimes leaving work for the day and kind of playing out um, things in my head that occurred and how I could have handled it differently. But really identifying who I was is drawing from who I remained consistent to be in each situation. I knew I was compassionate. I knew I always tried to meet people in the middle um I knew I I liked to share and give so now identifying those consistent traits that you demonstrate in every situation whether if it's social or professional that is how you kind of grow and you pick up small um indicators of who you are so that's the first step mm -hmm. identifying the common traits of, of how you act in every situation and who you attempt to be. Um, how others describe you? How friends would describe you? How past bosses would describe you? And then really what you see in yourself. So, so, so those are two pointers there. Who you, who you remain consistent to be in every situation and, and that is who you are. And I'll tell you this, we will change from time to time as we pick up new skills, as we encounter new experiences. So I think it's really important that we self-reflect every couple of years or every couple of months, depending on where we are, and write, keep a notepad, keep a small diary, and just do that introspective work. You know, I mean, as professionals, I think introspection is very, very important. <laughs> So, so we, I am, I'm, I have my notepad and I'm taking notes because we went deep real quick into it. I'm like, guys, I didn't even get to ask any questions. She was already answering the questions I have written down here. Um, that's, that's so good. It's so good. Internal consistency in solid foundation and having that confidence in, in who you are is so important. Yes. It is, it is crazy. So um question I want you to answer is what should job seekers look for in pursuit of professional happiness because when I was a job seeker coming out of college professional happiness was foreign to me I just wanted to come out and get a job to pay mm -hmm. back my student loans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then later on as you grow and as you mature you realize you're in a job that you don't like that you hate that's not even part of what you studied in school or or maybe it's not even the compensation is not mm -hmm. pay what what you're supposed to be receiving mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what what are those tips that you would give job seekers when mm -hmm. when when looking for job in in that pursuit of that professional happiness my first thing and what i try to do personally even as a a, a more seasoned um job seeker or having speak um exchanged or, or um, training um, older job seekers or more seasoned job seekers, and it would fall um, in line with younger job seekers, identify and find that employer who would allow you to be who you are professionally. If you are creative minded, you love to share ideas, you're able to, to build teams and be look for that position that will allow you to exercise and demonstrate those traits that you found valuable in yourself. Why? 
because we love to be in a place where we feel wanted. It is just human nature. So my first step to that young professional would be do a couple of personality assessments. They're free online everywhere. Um, <laughs> listen to your employers, take feedback, do some self-examination, write down a list of traits and qualities that you possess, read through job descriptions, research companies that will then allow you to be just that. Because I think it's so important because once we find ourselves in a place where we can't be who we are, we feel stifled, we are, and that's where the unhappiness uh, comes from. So Yeah, those, those are some great tips. Is, is money important in your, in your professional happiness? Yes, money is important. <laughs> and I want to speak to you on that. Not all, and first of all, I'll start off by saying, do not compare yourself with your neighbors, friends, or sisters and how much they are making. <laughs> and while and while money is- Say that again, say that again. Because first I... of all, get out the comparison trap <laughs> of comparing your money and what you're making with others. In the early part of my career, I found myself in that comparison trap and yeah. I felt unfulfilled although I was in, in, in the industry that I liked only because I found myself in that comparison trap. So that, that's the first rule of thumb. Get yourself out that comparison trap and make where you are work for you. And I'll tell you how I did that. So working for nonprofits, and I'm, 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 I'm going to be open about it <laughs> regardless of wherever this video goes. I'm, I'm ready for well. it. I'm ready for they it. They pay well. They pay well. They pay okay but not as much as if you were in, a, in the for-profit sector, right? But because I found my happiness in this sector and giving back and, and, and developing others, I made it work for me. You take additional courses, you make yourself a value added to the organization and gradually the increases will come once you've solidified your value. Um, the money may not be as much as it would be if you were elsewhere or but what mattered to me and it was being a place where my contributions are recognized mm -hmm. and solid and sound and then lifestyle you just make small lifestyle adjustments just to maintain that happiness it will mean different things for others others on the other hand, I've, I've spoken to other professionals. They rather sacrifice happiness for money. So it, 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 it all boils down to what you're able to commit to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know a lot of, a lot of celebrities and those people that are really rich and have the money would tell you money is not, is not the end all be all. It's not all of it. Right. Because you can no. have the most money, so much money in the whole world and still and still be unhappy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's Jay-Z that says more money, more problems. More <laughs> money, more problems. <laughs> and, I, and the thing is, I left recruitment where I had salary and commission on every hire for a nonprofit role that didn't get commissions. But eventually, if you do what you do, you will find your way and you'll find avenues mm -hmm. to make it work. So for you, what are those things that factor into professional happiness? Because we, we spoke about money, but, but like we're saying, it's, it's, it's more than money. And, and like you said, for everybody, it's going to be something different. But what are some of the factors that has to go into, into your professional happiness? I know money is money's definitely probably on the list, but, but, but what else are you... Um, you can't give up and, and that needs to be there for you to be professionally happy. I think, um, as I, I mentioned this earlier in the conversation and I'm going to mention it again, um, cause I believe it is human nature to want to, 
to be in an environment where you are wanted, mm -hmm. where you feel like you're placing value. It That is so in our professional relationships and in our personal relationships. Value, that's the we big word. Value. Yeah. Being in a place or being planted in a place where we know that we're giving value. Once we feel invaluable, we don't feel fulfilled. So my first recommendation, and, and, I, and I, I'm speaking to where I am now. In my business at Resume Smith and at the Grace Institute where I work full time, I see the value that I give. So I'm always marveled and, and that brings me satisfaction. And because you bring that value, it will be recognized and the money will come. The advancement will come. So it's identifying that place or that environment where you're able to bring value mm -hmm. and remain consistent with the I am. I, I, I remain consistent once you've identified that I am a place where you can remain consistent with that. So, um, consistency, yeah. Consistency, guys, consistency. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to jump into uh, a big t the, uh, a, a word here. And it's, it's a bit controversial. Um, um, I experienced it coming from the Caribbean and I think it factors into professional happiness um, because, and it's uh, it's a uh, code switching. Have you, have you, have you experienced? I've experienced code switching, <laughs> being different from who you are on the outside and in the social world. And of course we could switch. We all have to code switch because it's being relatable. Code switching helps you be relatable to your demographic. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. The Tommy that I am in front of my class, you might see some consistent traits. Half being affable, me being laughy, me being spontaneous. But then... I might laugh harder than I would amongst my peers and, and, and the people that I'm familiar with than I would in, in a social environment. So yeah, um, I think it's necessary to thrive, but you always, are, you're going to remain consistent to the core of who you are. There's always going to be an underlining essence. Yeah, because I was going to ask that. I was going to say, does it, does it in some way diminish who you are, though? Because I don't, I don't believe so. If you're, if you're in an environment or in a company where you might be the minority uh, uh, in the room and you find yourself having to be out of yourself to, to, to be accepted or to even be listened to, or to be able to, to even be taken seriously. Can can that have a toll on how you how you view yourself? It can definitely take a toll. And it's it goes back to finding your environment and your people. And your people could be also your professional peers. Mm -hmm. Right? And even when you find yourself being in the environment of being the only, the only Caribbean person, the only person of color in that room, once, once you find people who appreciate or are your people, because your people could also be people of a different heritage, yeah. but have the same underlining focus, the same, <clears throat> we work for the same industry, we can speak and we could we bring um, different values or share different contributions to this one particular thing. And that's the level you operate on. And you can still be the only in that room, but bring value to those people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then you have that commonality, that industry that binds you and makes yeah. those people, your people in that moment. Those people in that room may not be your people, 
at a at grandma's barbecue then. <laughs> so that's where code switching comes in. Um, and I found myself in environments um, where I was the only, you know, but it's finding that one thing that com- that's common mm-hmm. to the rest of people in the room. And I think that's where you find comfort in being the only. Mm-hmm. So what, what I hear you saying is, is what I hear you saying too, is, is find your tribe. Finding your tribe. Yes. Yeah, find definitely find uh find find your tribe. Um also what is coming to mind too is uh in 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 your professional pursuits in in being professionally happy. I always love this proverb that says if you want to go if you want to go fast, go at it alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. Yeah. So that's why I see where the tribe is important. But mm-hmm. let's talk about in 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 um, professional happiness too let's talk about mentorship what do you think about mentorship i think mentorship is extremely important i believe i'm I'm in in a vulnerable moment here if i had um a level of mentorship i perhaps would have been farther professionally i am not unhappy where i am but perhaps i would have been farther however I realized that and I compensated for it by reading a lot of books of interest, mm-hmm. aligning myself, myself to a podcast. And, and um, there are a lot of resources online that you can tune into Udemy um, and other courses on LinkedIn, Google courses, and kind of just availing myself so that in, um, in place of, and it can never serve um, or be in place, act in place of a mentor, but you still get the um, some information to help you grow. Yeah, right. And um, but mentorship, it's it's really, really, really a, a big part, and I think it's important to professional growth. But it should not dictate uh, happiness because happiness is your personal responsibility, and identifying the I am is a, a personal responsibility. Yeah, I, I I I wholeheartedly agree agree with that sentiment. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate with mentoring others as well, because I see how um, just having some guidance or someone in your corner um, to to help uplift you when you have those mm-hmm. down days. Because like mm-hmm. I said earlier, you're mm-hmm. not gonna get up and be perky every day. You're not every gonna want to go to work every day. Yes. So. Having those people in your corner who's gonna um, help to rejuvenate you, mm-hmm. I think I think that 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 is um, so so very much important. It is. It is. How can how can someone ask for what they want? To um, whether it be a job seeker going in for a new job, or you're in a job already and you're looking to to move up professionally, you've done professional development work and you're looking to transition somewhere or or maybe you want a bonus or what have you. How how can someone um, navigate that in asking for what you want and really showcasing that value to your manager or supervisor or whoever? My thing is, and and what I tell the women I train with at Grace is when you find yourself at an organization, you want to identify your allies and you want to capitalize on those relationships. And in identifying your allies, that's a two-way relationship, right? You can't just require this person to to feed you as their cup will be empty, but also putting some value into that relationship too, because it is from the, this is, this is the world it's in getting that people give most of the time. So, so, so you give a hand with a project, you show yourself that you're, you're willing to be molded. 
come out of your job description sometimes an assistant help and they would see that hey this person has an interest for this let me take her into this room and show her further training in this and that's where the advancement will come so um in essence find your allies identify your allies and identify them quickly once you get into an organization and share your value as much as you um would want them to be of value to you and then the acts becomes easier relationship building would come so much easier. So create that ally and, and prove yourself to be of value. Good. I'm writing notes, guys. I hope you're listening. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we're winding down to the end. And uh, I, it's amazing how time flies. You're going to have to come back again, Tammy, because there's so many more questions that I get to <laughs> ask you here. But let's tie it up in a bowl. What are some, what are some stuff that you haven't said already that you want to leave with our listeners today? What are some some advice you want to give them if they, you feel stuck in your career, you you on this part, on this pursuit to professional happiness, then you you're meeting bumps and obstacles in the road. What are some? Give us give us that 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 advice to take home to give us that energy and that boost to continue along that path of pursuing professional happiness. I am going to share this and it might seem like a cliche, but the world is your oyster. Do not limit yourself, but do not take yourself seriously. Because when we take ourselves too seriously, we start downing ourselves and doubting ourselves laugh at yourself and the awkward moments sometimes <laughs> and then when you revisit it revisit it with a fresh pair of eyes and see where you could have done better but also look at the the portions where you've done great and then you start identify oh this is who i am then because i've done this and i've done that and walk into your your true essence and the essence of who you are um i don't know that every day would not be the same but who you are is would remain consistent there, there's always a, a core essence there and 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 just be the best that you can be in, in every situation possible um and self-talk self-talk wow so um <laughs> positive self-talk that is where we would end it guys a perfect <laughs> note to end it on do oh, not commit yourself do not take yourself too seriously i like to be goofy and laugh sometimes yes. it's important to laugh and not be serious all the time like yes. that serious all the time walk into your true essence amazing yes. and, and, and self-talk affirmations process um that is that is very important positive mm -hmm. thinking and positive talk is so definitely important that is where we're gonna leave it with you guys tammy thank you so much for coming by and talking to me about this topic it was so amazing i'm gonna have to have you come back again <laughs> before we sign off tell yes people how they can contact how they can get in contact with you well i'm on linkedin tammy wiley and also um my website um www.resumeservices.com there is a, a space there where you can email me and make inquiries thank you so much and though that information is definitely gonna be in the podcast notes as well I want to say to Tammy, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and talk to us about this very important topic. My prayer is for everyone to find their professional happiness so that we can be better people and more happier people in this world. Yeah. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you guys again for listening. This has been another episode of the Network Hour podcast. Until next time, live, laugh, and love. And bye. Thank you, Molly.